Oh, it's time for Top That Trade. Joining us right now, Alan Nuckman, the Chief Market Strategist at BullseyeOption.com, and Phil Flynn, a Fox Business Network News contributor. Here we go, guys, with round number one. Wage, wow, wage growth is the biggest since 2008. What could possibly be wrong? Nothing. I'm going to say it. I like my assets late. So if you look at stock, 5% over the last year. Housing, homes are up 20% over the last year. And wages are up 5%, which actually is about equal to or very close to what's happening uh, with consumer price inflation. So you're seeing a rebound in prices. But let's put it in, in perspective. We spend 5% of our income on energy. We spend about 10% of our income on food. But if your wages are up 5%, you're coming out ahead. Well, you may be coming out ahead, but most Americans don't feel that way right now because inflation is one of the number one issues uh, right now on, on the consumer's mind. And the thing is, it's, you have to put wage growth in perspective. It's absolutely great that wages are going up because they haven't gone up for decades, you know. Right. But the bad part about this equation is that the first time that they do, you're only barely breaking even, right? Everything's costing more. Used cars are costing more, apparel, food at home, food at restaurants. And so that's the negative thing. Hopefully they'll get the supply chain issues settled. Hopefully they'll allow U.S. producers to produce oil and get those prices back down. And maybe we can get inflation under control and you can start to enjoy getting ahead on inflation for the first time in many years. Well, let me talk about facts, not feelings, because it is about facts. The fact is that this administration has issued more permits on federal drilling uh, in the first eight months than all of last year for Mr. Trump. I wonder what was going on last year. Oh, yeah, COVID. Never mind. Round number two, cow now. Meat prices are moving higher for consumers. How does that tail wag live cattle? It is on fire right now. We're seeing the price of cattle in a very strong bull market. Cash prices are going through the roof. Uh, and the problem is, just like a lot of commodities, supplies are tied exceeding demand. Probably the biggest risk to the cattle market happens to be corn. Why corn? Because the cost of energy is going up. And the fertilizer for corn is going to be very expensive. So it's going to get a lot more expensive to feed cattle. I'm a little concerned about demand destruction next year on, on beef because people might start looking for alternatives to meat because these prices could really go high. Well, looking at cattle, cattle's been in this range and it's at the hit a top of 140 for five years. So we've been between 130 and 140 since April. That targets a break on 150. What we're seeing actually is interesting. There's two parts of this cow conundrum. We've got the, the, the live cattle, the meat, and you've got the dairy cows. Dairy cows, they've eliminated a lot of the dairy cows, 85,000 in September, biggest four-month drop since 2009 because the feed prices are higher. Right, corn is 30% higher than it was last year. So at some point, we're going to have uh, less cows, and that will mean higher prices probably, but it depends on what side of the equation. You're on. If you're the rancher, that's what you want to see. That's what you want to see. But I'll tell you, if you if you like cheese, that's what you don't want to see. We've already seen cheese hit record high prices. And I personally like cheese. Round number three, streaking stocks. The S&P 500 streak is the longest since 1997. When does the bull market die of old age? Well, geez, I don't know. I'm an old grizzled trader and I've been doing this for 30 years. So we've seen a lot of positives and I'm still very optimistic. The S&P had eight record closes. More importantly is the Nasdaq had 11 straight uh, positive closes. But that record was only since 2019. So that tells me that tech has been very strong off and on. And the uh, tech being dead, uh, that obituary has been written many, many times over the last decade. And it's been wrong. But more importantly, the Russell finally made highs. So everybody made record highs. That's something you got to be positive about. I think he can't... Uh ignore the fact that the Build Back Better infrastructure plan passed, and that's going to be bullish for a lot of material companies, like a bulk of materials, for example, U.S. Steel, because we're going to be using a lot of that. Here's your bonus round question for today. The luxury watch industry is in trouble. There's a shortage, but it's driving growth in the secondhand market. How much is a secondhand market worth now with all those secondhand watches coming in? Is it 15 billion, 20 billion, or 35 billion? 
I'm going to go $35 billion. I, I think it's really hot right now, and people want old watches. I do have a Rolex for sale. Well, the answer is $20 billion. Maybe it's that low because people don't know how to charge a Rolex, I guess. These young kids don't know how to charge a Rolex. That's probably why it's so low. All right, guys. Great job today. Anyway, Business First Day continues right after this. Go to businessfirstam.com for where to see our show on TV.